Hello viewers and welcome to the part 2 of the lecture series on static timing analysis. In the first part of the first video, we have learnt about setup and hold times and solve few problems on these times with respect to our system. So today, we will be answering the question to the uh, why question. That is, why does setup and hold times exist in a logic circuit and why can't we just neglect them? For this, we will have to understand what is happening inside the flip-flop. So how does a flip flop? Uh, how is a flip flop made, and uh, how is the data propagating through it, from the input to the output? So let us look inside the flip flop to understand why these times exist. The design flow of the flip flop looks something like this. First, we'll understand what is a transmission gate and its basic functionality. Then we'll make a delat using these transmission gates and few inverters. After that, we will make a flip flop using these D latches. So finally, we will be in a position to understand how are these delays responsible for these uh, setup and hold times and uh, how is the data propagating through it. So first, let us start with the transmission gate. The logic symbol of the transmission gate looks like this. Uh, any of the symbol can be used uh, for the representation of the, of the gate. The working of the transmission gate to a, uh, is is a, is very similar to a basic switch. It has got two control inputs, C bar and C, and the input is supplied to this terminal. Output is taken from this terminal. It got, it has a uh, two uh, MOSFETs, one NMOS and one PMOS, structured in this manner. So this is NMOS and this is the PMOS. We all know that uh, NMOS becomes on if the gate input is given 1 and it becomes off if the gate input is given 0. PMOS becomes on if the gate input is given 0 and it becomes off if the gate input is given 1. So here the input is itself our uh, control input of the function gate. Therefore, if A is equals to 1, if A is given 1, both NMOS and PMOS become on and therefore output follows input. So this uh, acts as a closed switch. Okay. So if A is equals to 0, both NMOS and PMOS become off and output does not follow input. It becomes isolated. Therefore, it acts as an open switch. Okay. Now let me add uh, some extra information to this. Uh, let's say this is input. And this is A input. And this is the output. So if the control input or the a input is given 0 then uh, we say both are off so output remains at high impedance irrespective of the input if the control input is given 1 we say both are on therefore output follows input ok but we think uh, that input will follow any of the path but that is not the case here so input could be either 0 or 1 so here is the catch if the input is 0 the 0 will propagate through this path that is, it will propagate to through the NMOS only because NMOS is good uh, good to pass logic zero. It passes strong logic zero and weak logic one. Similarly, if the if the input is uh, one, this one will propagate through this path. That way, that is, it will propagate through PMOS only because PMOS is good to pass logic one. It passes strong logic one and weak logic zero. Okay, so here. It is also implied that uh, it can act as a tri-state buffer, 0, 1 and Z, okay, three states. Uh, this is about a transmission gate. Now a switch is ready, so let us make a latch out of it. A latch is a level sensitive memory element. Unlike the flip flop which is a head sensitive memory element. Uh, now let this be my uh, clock signal. So my latch is a level sensitive which means it is sensitive to these levels 0 and 1 levels. My flip flop is uh, sensitive to edges which means it is sensitive to these edges or uh, 0 to 1 transitions or 1 to 0 transitions. Okay, now let us understand the working of a positive level sensitive D, D latch. So here my D flip flop 
is controlled by the enable input e so if you see if you can see in the timing diagram if the enable input is high or logic 1 the output follows the input the input is simply copied onto the output but if the enable falls to zero or logic low the previous output values latch it onto the output that is the output remains unchanged so again if the enable is one or logic high it becomes transparent and the output follows input if it falls to zero the previous output value is latched onto the output it remains unchanged okay so this entire logic will be opposite in case of a negative level sensitive delatch now we'll see the internal structure of the delatch so this is internal structure of the positive level sensitive delatch okay so now it has got two transmission gates one and two if you observe carefully these two gates are complementary to each other see here we are applying clock bar to the bubble input and here we are applying the clock to the bubble input which means these two are exactly complementary uh, that is at any point of time only one gate can be on and automatically the other will be off let us see how it is going to work so initially let the clock be at logic 1 or logic high level now the gate 1 will be on and gate 2 will be off therefore enabling the output to follow the input and this input will also reach the node x now the clock falls to 0 that is if the clock is at logic 0 gate 1 becomes off and gate 2 becomes on uh, making the output isolate from the input and the data, the data input d present at node node x will automatically reflect at uh, output q that is it will get latched to the output q see the previous output value is gained the output remains unchanged so we are successfully we are successfully implemented the working of a positive level sensitive delatch now now we are all set to make a flip flop if you can see here this is the negative level sensitive d latch see clock is applied to the bubble input and this part from here is a positive level sensitive d latch clock bar is applied to the bubble input therefore if we join a negative level sensitive d latch uh, followed uh, by the positive level sensitive d latch we can create a positive edge trigger d flip flop okay so let us see how this configuration is also known as master slave configuration the first part is referred to as the master and second part is referred as the slave to the first one so it has got four uh, gates four transmission gates one two and uh, three and four if the clock input is zero or if it is a if is if uh, it is at low logic low then gates one and four become on gates two and three become off thereby enabling the data input t to reflect at node x and uh, it is isolated from output q therefore it remains in the previous state okay then if the clock input goes to high that is i can say on the rising edge of the clock on the rising edge of the clock that is 0 to 1 transition the data input present at node x will get reflected onto the output q and gets larger on the output q now this is the uh, scenario of the edge triggered action so let me summarize this when the clock input is at low the slave latching circuit is enabled making the output remain unchanged that is uh, in the previous output stage previous output uh, state and any input and any change in the input uh, d will reflect at the node x which will eventually get reflected at the output q only at the next positive edge of the clock okay so take some time uh, to analyze this and understand so and only then you can proceed further so now it is high time to connect this topic with the setup at full times so first let us discuss the setup time okay so on the rising edge of the clock the data waiting at the node x this is the node x on the rising edge of the clock the data waiting at the node x will get latched on the output q but this data d uh, but this data will come will be coming from the d input d right so 
the data uh, the data at node x should be ready or it should be stable at this point and this uh, data is coming from data input d so this data takes some finite amount of time to start and uh, to start from d and reach node x therefore the data here should be stable at least before this time whereas this time is nothing but the time required for the data to travel from d input and reach node x okay so the data input should be uh, stable sometime before the active edge of the clock and this time is nothing but a setup time so any data arrived before the setup time will produce a stable output at node x and this is the exact reason behind the setup time in every flip flop now that we have ensured that the data d reaches successfully at the node x there is also uh, there is still one problem left let us see what it is uh, when the active when the rising edge of the clock arrives it passes through a number of buffers and inverters to reach the input of the transmission gate okay uh, buffers and inverters to reach the input of the transmission gate and there is a finite amount of delay between the clock and the clock bar clock and the clock bar therefore that is the reason uh, in this transmission gate uh, requires uh, some more time for switching between on and off conditions okay so it uh, requires some delay there is some delay so during this time we do not want any disturbance coming from the d input to corrupt the data which is already present at y we do not want any disturbance to corrupt the data which is present at y therefore uh, finally we can define the delay between the active edge of the clock and the time required by the date uh, required by the gate uh, to switch properly plus the delay from the d input to the transmission gate input accounts for the whole time okay so the data d has to remain stable has to be uh, remain stable for this whole time even after the active edge of the clock occurs in order to not corrupt the data which is already present at y okay so let me end with uh, two note points setup time violation uh, setup time uh, violation concept is very important for the proper uh, capturing of the data hold time violation concept is very important for the captured data to be latched properly okay so is it clear till now we'll continue this in the part 3 of the lecture series i hope it is clear till now if you have any doubts please drop it down in the comment section and uh, thank you for watching